So Chris, tell us a little bit about Common Cartridge. Common Cartridge was a very exciting project this year. Um, and as Milan mentioned in his talk, it's a history-making event where we have um, a, the same cartridge uh, imported and running on multiple LMS platforms, something that we've been trying to do for years, rallying around standards like CP and others, but which are all great, but for whatever reason we haven't had the, the alignment to get it to the point where it is now, or starting to be where it is now. And, uh, so it's pretty exciting. With common cartridge uh, agreement between many publishers and LMS vendors. We're able to create one export, one file that can be imported into any and all LMS applications without functionality loss, without any transformations on the content in an open standards-based format. So we looked at all the existing IMS specifications and took whatever was applicable to the problem we were having the process was arduous in a way for our engineering folks. They had to really talk about you know, and open up about the proprietary content um, uh, and understand then how we kind of make that standards based. Uh, one good thing was to try to write requirements documents and try to build the entire group on a common understanding. So I think that was a big first good step to nail down the data model we want to support and the use cases we want to support. And then I have to say that the technical people really took over from Blackboard, from Sakai, from Pearson and really fleshed out the, the, the technical aspects of the specification. So it's really exciting to see that it can happen within less than a year. So. Implementation on a live production system we use to create learning content. So as part of that uh, application we've extended it to, to support common cartridge export f as a new format and, uh, and that's what we're doing today. We were able to extend our base support for IMS content packaging because that's the basis for the new common cartridge format um, and we were able to extend it out to have handlers for the discussion forum format, the new link format, uh, the SCORM processing that's built into common cartridge and for the subset of QTI uh, to make sure that things like uh, uh, discriminator level feedback import properly amongst different systems. So I really think it's going to be a big step forward for the interoperability of, of content exchange between uh, different course management systems and other platforms. Uh, we, we had uh, Pearson creating the content over to the right of us and emailing it over to, to all the other uh, LMS systems and being able to import that in into the different platforms and illustrate uh, the similarities of the content when it does come in. Um, there's differences in, at the presentation layer, but the structure of the content and the, the meaning and intent is, is persisted across the different systems, so it's pretty exciting, I think. If you went back a year, what, what probability would you have given that we would actually have pulled this off? I, I actually had quite a bit of faith when I first met the people on the team and realized the spirit of cooperation that was occurring, which was very astounding to me. Um, that you know, other publishers were coming to the table, LMS vendors were talking about what they wanted you know, to see as far as import, what, what they wanted supported. Uh, we had healthy arguments back and forth about you know, support this SCORM version or that SCORM version, or this version of QTI versus the old version of QTI. But, you know, when we came to an agreement, it seemed like most of us understood the argument that was being you know, uh, uh, bantered about. And it was amazing that even when we had conflicts, someone like Kevin Riley, that was kind of our moderator, if you will, was able to direct the conversation or take the action offline and come to it the next time we met together.